Yeah, Davey, I know it's been, or March 1st only, but is there a reason why Juan's not playing today? Yeah, he, uh, he was scheduled to play today, but he fouled the ball uh, off his foot yesterday during live BP. So um, we're just being cautious. I mean, he says he feels okay, but um, we're just going to, you know, give him a day or two, see how he feels tomorrow. Which foot? His right foot. He's, it's just kind of like a sore thing where you don't want to push him on it? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's, you know, when you foul a ball off like that, and, you know, these guys wear these big old shin guards and it, it went underneath. So um, – it got him pretty good. Sure. Um, Zim's in the lineup. I know, you know, every year we ask you all about his workload and what he's going to do. Um, this is really early. So did he kind of want to get started right away? Did you want to get him at bats? How did you kind of decide to get him in the lineup? Yeah, I, you know, I've had a conversation with him. He said it says it felt, feels pretty good. He wanted to get get out there. So um, he's going to play. We didn't play him in February. So it's, it's March 1st. So we're into March. So he gets to, <laughs> right. he gets to go out there and play. <laughs> right. Um, good deal. Thank you. You said it was live BP for Soto, right? Who was he facing? Um, he was, I think it was against uh, one of our young kids, Peterson. He he wanted to get some at bats against some live pitching yesterday, so um, he went in and, uh, like I said, he fouled the ball off his foot. But I'm I'm pretty sure it was Peterson. How how has Soto been looking in in live BP and outfield stuff and everything? Good, good. His his whole thing, you know, he 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 really hones in on, 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 on seeing pitches. He likes to see a lot of pitches early in camp. Um, and as you, as we all know, you know, he really focuses on, on hitting the ball, you know, in the middle of the field, staying in the middle of the field. So he stays inside a lot of, a lot of balls, uh, during batting practice, but that's him. And he's, he's got a great, uh, game plan, a great routine, uh, when it comes to spring training, he, he knows what he wants to do. Um, uh, but he was in a good place. I mean, um, physically he looks, Really, really good. He, you know, he put a few pounds on a muscle, um, but he, he leaned out uh, and he got a lot quicker. You know, he, he, he often jokes about around with me about stealing 30 bases. <laughs> and uh, I tell him, I said, hey, you never know. I mean, if you're ready for it, you, you know, you can do it. But he's he's intuitive, man. He, like I said, he always wants he wants to get better every day. You say that as it's a joke. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think is like a good like benchmark then for him? I, th I, I never put any any numbers on what they, these guys to do, especially a guy like him. Um, but like I said, I watch him run and watch him jack balls in the outfield, and he looks he looks good. So um, and he's a student of the game. You know, he goes out there, he watches pitchers before the games on their moves, and uh, when he deems like he feels like he can steal a base, and we think he can steal a base, we let him go. Dave Preston, WTOP. Good morning, Davey. Uh, morning. Looking at, you mentioned that uh, Zim's going to uh, get a look out there today, obviously. Um, what do you ex what do you expect from him this season? What are you envisioning his role this year, you know, at bat-wise? Uh, and how important is it to get production from that first base position after last season? Uh, the, in yeah, the I think with, you know, obviously with, with Josh Bell and him, we're going to have a lot of production. Um, my biggest thing with Zim is, is to keep him healthy. And that's the way we got to tr treat him. He understands his role. You know, he's going to come off the bench a lot, uh, play against left-handed pitchers um, and come off and pinch hit and play some defense. So, uh, but my, you know, my concern with him is always, you know, his health and keeping him healthy. Like I said, he worked really hard uh, this off season, uh, got ready. He looks good. Um, after having conversations with him, he, you know, he feels like he's ready to play in a game. So, He's going to play today, get a couple of bats, and we'll, we'll go from there. What did you miss the most from him last season in the clubhouse? Uh, you know, for me, it's, it's just his conversations, not only with me, but with his teammates. Um, guy's super positive guy all the time. Um, but, you know, I, I've often mentioned, you know, he, he's he, he, he's kind of that uh, uh, unspoken captain, per se, you know, and um, when he speaks, guys listen. Um, he's, he's been through a lot, and he understands the game. Uh, I love, you know, talking to him all the time and, and talking to him about the game, but just about uh, 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 life itself and what, you know, how he views things. Um, he, he's a tremendous, uh, not only uh, player, but a, a person. So um, having him around every day, it, it's good to have him back. Um, like I said, I, 
and I tell them all the time, I don't think for any means that, you know, uh, th this could be your last go around, you know, I, like if you keep yourself in shape, you know, yeah, and he's swinging the bat well right now. I mean, he could probably play for another few, a few more years. So, um, but it's good to have him back. Thank you. Hey, Davey, I have a few potential backup outfielder questions for you. Uh, now, now that you don't have like the obvious go-to and Michael A. Taylor anymore, what goes into, like what's the criteria that you look for that makes a player a good fourth outfielder, let's say? Yeah, we, we, we're we looking for a guy that can play all three outfield positions, um, especially center field. Um, Stevenson is going to start out there today. Um, you know, Parr has played some center field. Uh, we, we feel like he could possibly play center field as well, but we're looking for a guy uh, that could play all three outfield positions. Um, I like left-handed hitters, you know, so, um, you know, if a guy, you know, guys a left-handed hitter, I like Steven Santa Parr, I like those guys, you know, so, um, you know, we're out there, we're searching, we're looking, uh, but, you know, I, I really feel like Stevenson could do the job and so can Parr, so those guys are going to play uh, a lot of center field here in spring training. Why is it center field that stands out to you wanting more of a backup than left or right? Oh, because I, you know, I deem that you need to play all three. You know, when you're a backup outfielder, um, if, you know, you, if something goes down, uh, you need to be able to play all three. Or, you know, if you don't have a center fielder per se, you know, you can always call one up. But if it's only for two or three days, you need someone that can play center field for those two or three days. You just don't want to bring somebody up. Also, uh, Yadiel had a really strong season in winter ball. What did you observe from him from a distance this winter, and what are you looking for him this season? We've we've always known that he's had he's had unbelievable success in the minor leagues and in winter ball. Um, we've always known that he can hit. He's gotten so much better in the outfield. He's worked with Bob uh, to get better. I mean, he could play both corners, you know, really well. So I think it, for him, it's just to continue to play. I mean, uh, we love his bat, no doubt about it. I mean, he can hit so. Um, you know, we're just going to keep watching, keep, you know, here's a guy though, for me, I think he has to play, you know, in order for a swing to be right, he has to play, you know, every day. So, um, you know, but we, we, we like how he is at bats. We know we can put him in anywhere, man. He's going to, he's going to put good at bats together. Hey, um, Stevenson in some short bursts has shown you a lot, uh, and, and almost has looked like a guy who could play every day. What is that next step for him, and um, how does he become a guy that can do that consistently? And in a way, is it a blessing and a curse that he's shown he can be so productive off the bench because now you know he isn't necessarily a guy who needs to play every day and be productive? Can that almost be a detriment at times to a guy like that? You know, you know for me, you know, like I said before, you know, this is here's a guy, you know, if you, and if you look at our outfield, um, you know, even last year we had. Uh, three pretty good outfielders in front of him, you know, so it's, so it was tough to, to crack the lineup, but uh, you know, I like his at bats, especially against right-handed pitching. Um, so you might, you might see him, you know, play against more righties, uh, you know, in the future. So, but he works good at bats. And, and the biggest thing for me is that, you know, he's gotten a lot more aggressive in the outfield and making plays, you know, and, and so, um, but we like Stevenson a lot. I mean, he's done well for us. And, and as you said, in spurts, um, he can help us a lot. And, and his at bats off the bench, you know, I personally nick, nickname him 3 2, you know, and because uh, every at bat, you know, he's, he's almost 3 2. He had another one yesterday in the first game of spring training and you know, work, working counts to 3 2. So, uh, and work the walk. So, you know, I love his at bats, you know, and it's good to have a guy like that. And also, too, a guy that can steal a base, you know, on occasion, a guy that can pinch run. Um, he could do all those things for us. Um, different young guy, Seth Romero. I know you said he's going to throw to uh, for live BP tomorrow. Um, are you guys preparing him as a starter? Uh, is that ultimately where you do see him, or is there still a chance that that he could fit in for a bullpen for you, whether it's now or down the road? Yeah, you know, for right now, I, I like to see him stretched out. Um, you know, down the road, we don't know how, how we're going to use him, but we want to build him up and get him stretched out. I mean, here's a guy, you know, that we can potentially start, but also can – use that at a bullpen for multiple innings if need be. Uh, but we want, to, we want to stretch them out right now, and, and then we'll make a decision as we get further along. Last year was such a weird situation for him, getting called up maybe when he never thought it was going to happen. Pitches a couple games, then gets hurt. Um, mentally, where do you feel like he's at? What do you think he got out of, out of that experience from last year? 
I, th I thought he matured quite a bit. I thought he got to see what it was like to pitch in, in, in the big leagues, and especially about um, he's got good stuff, but making mistakes to big league hitters, you know, they go, they go a long way. Um, he understands that, but uh, I'm watching him now and um, he's throwing the ball really, really, really well. So, you know, he, he's a young kid that hasn't pitched that much. I mean, he's been hurt, um, you know, so, you know, we got, like I said, we got to get him stretched out and, uh, and get him confident and then we'll see where it goes from there. Morning, Davey. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, MLB letting hitters use iPads in the dugouts now during games this season. And um, what sort of a difference you think that'll make and whether it's as much maybe a, a psychological thing as an actual tactical advantage uh, and or in what ways it can be helpful. Yeah, for, for, you know, for, for some guys, it's helpful. For some guys, I've know you know I've known that um, it doesn't matter if we have it or not. But a lot of guys like to like to watch their at bats afterwards, or or even watch you know pitchers you know that are going to come in the games. So that we'll have it there for them. Um, you know, we used to have uh, video rooms so that they can go back and watch you know every at bat that they had. Sometimes I think that could be detrimental, especially if you have a bad at bat and you go back there and you watch yourself swinging at a, a three, two curveball that bounced. I mean, to me, that does no good, you know? So, uh, but you know, a lot of guys li like it. So, you know, it's available for them, and, you know, and it's, I'm glad that they're able to uh, use it, you know, this year and we'll, we'll see how it works for them. I mean, but like I said, uh, a lot of guys use it. A lot of guys, you know, preferred just watching the games and watching the, the pitchers um, and, and they, and they do it that way as well. Are there ways in which you think that uh, from a real tactical standpoint that that can be helpful more than maybe some people realize? You know, I think it's helpful when you don't you, when you don't see a guy per se, you know, you're seeing him for the first time, uh, a bullpen guy or whatever, and you have the ability to go, go up there and watch his at bats, just say against all right handed hitters or all left handed hitters. You know, it's it's available there now. They can see all that stuff and and um, and have a game plan of what this guy's going to do to you. You know, same thing with um, with base runners. You know, they can actually pull up. You know, we can pull up what, what they do, uh, their move, um, their time. You know, and, and they can look at that stuff so they have an idea of what what's going to transpire, what they can look for. You know, when they when they get called upon to steal the base. Thanks. Davey, Austin both uh, oh gosh, one second. Uh, Austin both is still uh, today. What uh, where in his progress? Uh, what are you looking for from him today? And uh, what is where? What sort of track do you feel he is on this uh, week and month? Yeah, he's thrown the ball well so far. You know, in camp. Um, you know, like I said, he's worked a lot on his mechanics and, and honed in on his mechanics this winter, and he looks good. So. Uh, get him out there in a, in a real game. Um, I'm curious to see uh, where he's at. You know, uh, he's throwing the ball well. He's had some good live BPs. He's keeping the ball, you know, down. Um, I know he talked a lot about you know, perfecting his change up a little bit. So I just want him to go out there. You know, the biggest thing for me, is, like I said early early on, is honing in on his mechanics and uh, and getting him to throw strikes. You know, uh, that's that's important for myself. It's important for Hickey. You know, we we talked about it this morning. You know, about you know the focus on uh, on getting ahead of hitters as opposed to getting behind the hitters. Uh, there's a big, uh, big difference in numbers um, when you're actually ahead of a hitter and, uh, or you fall behind a hitter. So uh, we want our, we want our pitchers to understand, you know, that we, we want to get ahead and work ahead always. Also, there's more than a few uh, new guys on this roster, this team, and even the non-roster invitees uh, who you dealt with when you were with the Chicago Cubs, former Cubs, Every transaction is in and of itself. Was there a one point in time this winter where you're like, oh my goodness, this is kind of turning into a Wrigley East? <laughs> no, uh, you know, I'm glad that they're here. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, uh, but we, you know, like I said, Riz and I sat, we put together a list of guys that potentially could fit for us. Um, and we were fortunate to get a lot of guys that we actually uh, wanted and, um, and they fit in and they're doing well. Uh, you saw Schwarber yesterday, you know, you, you get a base hit up the middle, throw somebody out from left field. 
um, his energy, you know, he, he loves to play the game, his energy, you know, clubhouse, his energy on the field is going to help us out a lot. You know, John Lester, who I, you haven't seen pitch yet, um, uh, he's going to help us out in many ways, a veteran guy, um, helps out, you know, he's, he's going to do well. I think he's going to do really well, but he's another guy where, you know, he fits in, you know, in our clubhouse uh, to build that culture that we have. Um, and he's a, he's, a, he's a leader, you know, and, and when things go awry, he's one of the guys I count on, count on to get things, you know, squared away in that clubhouse and keep guys rolling. And if there was one thing above all the others, uh, things that you learned when you were uh, with the Cubs as, as a coach that helped make you the manager you are today, what what was that thing? What, what were some of the things that uh, that you really took from your time there that has helped you here? You know, for me, honestly, you know, and I've always said this, and, and I learned this, you know, many years ago. And um, it's uh, don't permit don't permit the pressure to exceed the pleasures of this game. You know, just kind of have fun, and uh, you know, we got a lot of good players, so go out there and and, uh, and teach. You know, I'm always teaching and, and enjoying what I do. So um, I'm going to be, you know, as you know, I'm going to be patient, and uh, and I'm going to try to get these guys to go one and zero every day. Davey, when you're when you're stretching out somebody young like a Ramiro or any of your other young prospects to potentially become a major league starter, aside from mechanics, like mentality, attitude wise, what what advice do you give them about that role on the big league level? You know, for me, I, I, you know, I played with a, a guy that's a, a Hall of Famer. Um, we came up together, Greg Maddox. And he often, I often used to talk to him about, you know, what his, what the best pitch in baseball is, you know, what, what made him so good. And every time I asked him that question, he'd always say strike one. He said, you got to get ahead of hitters. And we try to tell our young guys the same thing. Hey, work ahead of hitters. You know, we show, we got a lot of numbers to dictate. Hey, when you're oh one oh uh, one two on hitters, um, your success rate goes, goes up tremendously as opposed to going one oh two oh uh, three, one. So, um, my advice to them is, you know, to, to get ahead of hitters, throw strikes, you know, when they work their bullpens, you know, we, I, I love, you know, one, we watch their mechanics, but two is also, you know, if they're throwing 30 pitches to try, try to throw 24 to 25 strikes in those 30 pitches and, uh, and go from there. So, um, we're on that every day. You know, I know our coordinators talk about it every day. Higgy's a big believer in throwing strike one, uh, so, you know, we're, we're going to harp on them about doing that, especially our younger guys. Uh, question, Matt Weaver, NBC. Hey, Davey. How would you describe the state of Josh Bell's swing right now? Would you say it's, it's he's still working on getting it to where it will be opening day, or is, do you have kind of a set plan and, he, you know, he's just progressing toward that? Yeah, he's going to progress towards that. I mean, he's got his first at-bat yesterday. Um, what, I, what I loved about his at-bat, you know, he, he took a, he took a ball middle away and, and smoked it to left field, you know, hard on the ground. So, um, you know, right, right now it's about our hitters getting their timing and games a lot quicker, you know, as they, as they, they play a, a, an opponent and different pitchers. So just get, get ready to hit, work on your timing um, and work good at bats. You know, I think yesterday we saw a lot of pitches yesterday, which is kind of nice, you know, and, uh, and trying to get the ball in the strike zone and not as, as this progresses and we start playing more, it's about getting the ball you, you know you can hit and, and making good solid contact. So, and that'll start happening as, as the ABs come. Thanks, Dave.